their late years, they decided to sell everything and move to Atlanta to start their own business. So um, I did, like she said, I was in the media industry. I didn't like the family business. <laughs> that wasn't for me. Um, and I joined, um, I started working for a Spanish radio station here in 2003. I was uh, the national sales manager there for about 12 and a half years. Um, I was offered a position in Los Angeles. I decided to move. And then uh, I decided to move back to Atlanta for personal reasons. And I decided I didn't want to work for anyone else. I made millions of dollars for the owner of the radio station. And he didn't even come and say goodbye to me the day that I left. You know, so I felt that it was time for me to put that own effort into my own business. And that's when I decided to change my career. Um, now I am a financial advisor and I really enjoy what I do. Um, I'm licensed in insurance. I specialize in life insurance. Um, I do investments. So anybody like investments? Anybody want to learn how to multiply their money and have your money working for you? That's what I really, really enjoy, teaching people how to do that. And recently I got my uh, loan officer license as well. So I, I help people, everything financial, from getting out of debt. I teach them how to uh, pay off their credit cards, you know, fast. A lot of times we think that if I send extra money to, you know, monthly to the payment, we're going to get done faster. But it's not true. It's not true. So, you know, I develop a whole strategy, you know, for people to get out of debt quicker. And that way it um it they end up having money you know at the end of the month that i can help them invest that that way they have a retirement plan so that's that's what i do you have any questions Amy? yeah i one of my questions that i will do for you to you is in the real estate area what kind of activities you do what what do you offer to the community in this area so um I'm with a company called Primerica. Has anyone ever heard of Primerica? No? Primerica is the largest financial services company of North America. We don't only operate in the US, but we also operate in Canada, okay? Because we are so big and we represent Rocket Mortgage. Have you ever heard of Rocket Mortgage? So Rocket Mortgage is the largest um, mortgage lender in the country and because these are two powerhouses we've joined forces and we're able to offer our clients um wholesale rates so when other financial institutions um, mortgage companies are offering you know rates at over seven seven and a half we're able to offer wholesale rates so just to give you an example the last closing that i did um the client was getting quoted at a 7.375 percent interest rate i came in at a 5.9 and that's a huge, huge difference in the monthly payment, you know, at the end of the day. So um, I, I love what I do. And um, I'm also looking for people that want to join my company. We're licensing people in those three areas. If you guys know of anybody, send them my way. You have to be 18 years or older, have a valid social security, and have a clean record. So you got to make sure you haven't killed anybody lately. <laughs> So, but yes, we have a lot of, uh, I work with clients at every stage. So everything from getting them out of debt, you know, to helping them grow and teaching them how to invest. Um, let me see. And Daisy, I'm going to stop you here a yeah. little bit because the license for long, you mentioned that already. And we have been talking about how important is insurance in the real estate because the amount of capital they have, they are investing in real estate more than any time. So I would like to know how is the license? How do you did this loan officer license? How was the process, the studying, taking the test? How it was? How it is? So the um, the licensing is not hard. It's, it, it really isn't hard. You just have to, you know, dedicate yourself and be disciplined to learning the material and just going to take the exam. You know, the company is sponsoring, you know, the licenses. So you don't even have to pay money out of your pocket for it. So um, it, it's it's really just... How much time it takes? To how long did I study? I, I want to say, like... Maybe a month on and off, a few hours here, a few hours there. 
and then loan for, for just for loan officer yes what's, what's the minimum requirement for this like we are on f1 right can we get the license i would have to i would have to look into that yes i would have to look into that the information i have is name like you say name 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 for now name name for, for now because we are international students so that's the information i have until we are not in opt now we can participate in many commercial in the future, in the future yeah but for now because we are international students the answer is no for now so this is what I what I um what I teach my my clients, right? I teach them how money works. So yeah, how does the the university pay you? In check cash or direct deposit? Direct deposit. In direct deposit, so your money goes directly into the bank. To the yeah. What do you bank with? Mm, bank of America. Bank of America. Okay, me too. <laughs> so let's just say that um, I go into the bank and I ask for a loan. They're gonna let me borrow your money, exactly. right? Exactly. And do you think that they're going to let me borrow that money for free? No. No, they're going to charge me anywhere from 8 to 28%. So what they're really doing is that they're investing your money into the global economy, and they're keeping those returns, right? So out of that interest rate that they're charging me, how much do you get back? It's zero. Well, you get a 0.01%, right? So this is what I do. I teach people how to bypass the bank so that you guys can invest your own money into the global economy. For the last 80 years, the stock market has yielded at least a 9% rate of return. So where would you rather have your money? You know, gaining a 9% or a 0.01 at the bank? 9%. At a 9%. And this is exactly what I do. So I help people establish their emergency funds, which everybody should have anywhere from three to six months of your monthly expenses in an emergency fund yes you can have it in a bank because you need liquidity right you need easy access to that money but aside from that anything else you should be investing you should putting that money to work for you it's time that we you know change that switch i know that a lot of times in our back home in our countries you know life insurance is not something that's talked about investments is not something that's talked about so that's why um i i really enjoy you know teaching clients about this um we help them establish education funds short-term funds and also their their investment accounts their retirement accounts all right is everyone here familiar with iras roth iras traditional investment yes. you, you have you have one already yes awesome amazing that's great so typically if you do these if you open up these accounts and you go to um a financial institution they're not even going to look at you if you don't have half a million dollars, right? And so what my company specializes is in helping the average middle-income American, okay? So these accounts can be open with as little as $100. But starting and having that discipline at a, you know, at a very early age is, when it, is what's going to yield you the best results in the long run, right? So that we have enough money to retire. So a lot of times people don't think of, uh, how long they're going to be retired right. it's almost as many years as the ones in your productive year of life what is so the, uh, yes. what is the criteria for IR or Roth IR? um we can help you with a social security number or a tax ID number mm -hmm. yes so what are the two major financial risks that we face in life is living very uh living a long life and mm -hmm. getting to retirement age without money mm -hmm. and so yeah, and, and that's where retirement um, plans come in, right? And the other one is dying at a young age. So let's just go back to this. Remember I said that you almost live as long in retirement as you do in your productive years? So if you're retiring at age 60 and you live to be about 90, that's anywhere from 25 to 30 yeah. years that you're going to be retired. And a lot of times people don't sit with a financial advisor to see how much money they're going to need to be able to live you know, the, those many years in retirement. So that's where our retirement plans come in. Um, and then the other one, like we said, is dying too soon. And that's where our um, life insurance plans yeah. come in, right? So the goal is to have the families protected in case of either scenario shall, shall occur. So what? Um, who should be considering life insurance? For one, people, people that have, you know, children or parents, somebody that depends financially on you. You know, whether it's your parents back home or family, relatives, 
or if you have you know children that are still not self-sufficient, right? Secondly, we have people that have low savings. So can anyone tell me the cost of a funeral in this country? Ten thousand dollars minimum. Ten thousand minimum. Anyone else? Because it was on the board, 9,999. 9,999. <laughs> that price is right now. Okay, so it's anywhere from 20 to 30,000. Oh, okay. And for people that want to be sent back to their country, that's another added expense, right? So 30s, people that have high debt, they should be considering a life insurance because who's going to take over that debt? You're going to leave that debt to your kids? You know, that. so you should really consider a life insurance policy at that point, right? Because especially if we buy houses and you spend so many years trying to save up to put money down for that home, and if you're the only breadwinner and you pass away, what's going to happen to the house if your spouse can't pay for it? They will foreclose it. They're going to foreclose. But it. in Canada, that's the law. If you own the house and you buy, like you pass, so at somehow reason, and you have that. Because you have to have the insurance. Now we take the insurance on the house. So does it cover that? Well, what you would do when when you sit down with me, I would make a recommendation. I take into account, um, you know, your income. I take into account your debt, and then I give you a recommendation of what you should at least have in in a policy enough to cover your debt, whether it's cars, uh, personal everything loans, home, paid out by yes, the everything. And then on top of that, you want to take into consideration how much your funeral is going to be. And if you have small children, if you want to put them to college. So there's always a recommendation of what your policy should be. Obviously, at the end of the day, it's your choice, right? And I have seen it where I have had clients sit with me. The husband worked, the wife didn't. They had three kids. I gave them two quotes for life insurance. I made my recommendations. They didn't take the policy. And the husband passed away three, three months later left the wife and the children on the street no i'm asking not by the life insurance when you take the insurance on the home uh -huh. you buy a house and you get the insurance mm -hmm. so in insurance is on my name and house is on my name if somehow i pass away mm -hmm. so the insurance will pay rest of that money no no, no because there's two types of insurance <clears throat> that they make you buy this is optional this is optional the, there's two insurance. types of insurance. The mortgage insurance, it doesn't protect you. It protects the finance company that's giving you the loan. Right. In case you pass away or whatever, you know, or, or you know, you stop making payments, mm -hmm. they're covered on their investment, you know, on your loan. But no, the question is like you get that insurance uh -huh. on the mortgage. Now you pass away. So the insurance will pay to that mortgage company, so your family will have will be no. having no burden on that. No, that you somebody needs to keep paying for that house. Oh, okay. So they will put that's it on insurance for, for yes. That's I mean, it's Canada is not like that. No. That I see you have the house because my auntie, mm -hmm. the same thing happened. She passed away, and according to the government and all that, so she got the the insurance company paid everything for the whatever the house was pending. They paid in house was free. Like my uncle don't have to pay anything. Oh, that's nice. No, it's not like that here. <laughs> yeah. So, and then lastly, you know, people that want to leave an inheritance, mm -hmm. you know? So it's time that we start leaving and creating generational wealth instead of leaving problems in debt, you know, okay. our family. So now having proper coverage will create a financial hardship, you know, to our loved ones and pay for them. So let's just take this here for example. We have um, let's call them Juanito and Maria. They look Hispanic, right? <laughs> okay. So let's just say that they each bring home twenty five hundred dollars, right? But they have monthly expenses just like all of us. You know, the mortgage, the cars, the insurance, credit cards, utilities, groceries, childcare, which is through the roof. At the end of the month, their expenses are about four thousand dollars. Right, so they're in a financially decent situation. You know, they're bringing in five thousand. They have an extra thousand dollars to take the kids to Chuck E. Cheese or you know Disneyland once a year. But well, what would happen to this family if you know um, Juanito here passes away? So along with him goes his income. So now Maria is short, trying to take care of the kids. She's probably going to have to get a second job. And if she can't make ends meet because you know the money is not enough. She's going to have, they're, they're going to, you know, foreclose the house, like you said, right? So not only is she going through an emotional devastation, she's also going through a financial crisis at the same time. And all of this can be avoided, 
right? And that's not to say she still has to come up with a, a, a fundraiser for the $20,000 to bury, you know, the husband. So it's, all of this can be prevented, you know, through a life insurance policy. So the idea is to have anywhere from eight to 12 years of your income and coverage, or at a minimum, leave all of your um, debts secured through an insurance policy, right? So let's just take one of those examples. Let's say he was making $30,000 a year. If he wanted to leave his family eight years of his income, he would have a policy of 240,000. If he wanted to leave his family 10 years of his income, he would have a policy of 300,000. Or if he wanted to leave 12 years of his income, he would have a policy of 360000 So the difference between my company and the other uh, company or the, the industry is that we will deliver any of these amounts in 7 to 10 days, which is the fastest in the industry. So not only do we help people get protected, but we also help them create generational wealth, and we also help them have a decent retirement plan for, you know, when they decide to retire. So... Any questions? You have a question? So is it viable for the students or something? No, Are we connected you, to that? Or no. You mean if you can buy an insurance right. policy? As long as you have a way to pay for it, yes. So the way that that it would work is that we would connect your, um, we would set up your your bank account, and it would automatically be transferred over to pay for your policy. It's just like a regular bill. Yeah. We need the social and all that stuff there yeah, for this. To be a, a client, no, you can have a tax ID or social. Okay. That's so I can, it's only if you're going to join the industry that you have yeah, to have a social yeah, security. No, I can, are, yeah. We need an ID. I can, I can number right. I can. I can I'm getting there, get right. Well, I have a photo, but I'm gonna do it so I can dress. I can't hear you. For example, I have a photo uh -huh. that I'm gonna subscribe here, but I know that, like, but if you're gonna join with you, I need a social idea and I need to be resident here. I would drink a photo. Yes. Both. Yes. I need to be a resident. And yeah. remember to join in commercial activities, oh, yeah. uh, participating yeah. in the business. Minimum the people need, need to be. Right. Minimum work permit. If you don't have a green card, it doesn't matter. Work minimum permit work when you have OPT, for OPT. example, in our case, yes. and when you finish the program. But for now, when we are international students, to join commercial activities, like means selling, in simple words. In OPT, you get work permit? No, but my question was different. My question was that can like I buy this. a plant which yes. has been as a student? Yes. Without any uh, social security number. Without social security, you just have to have an IT, IT number. That's IT. It. And enough money to pay for whatever plan you decide to. But if buy. you get a social security, you can pay the tax also. Yes, you can start to pay tax if you are working like that. You, if, you, if you can't make money, but you can do freelance, you know. Okay. So you're not making money, you have in little money, you're investing somewhere, uh -huh. but you can take the cash from that, uh, work at the job, but you are investing that return is coming on that return, you can pay the tax. So you still save from that side. You can get the ITN number on that. Yeah, so to do your your financial plan, which is, you know, the protection plus the investment, yeah, you can do you can it. Do it first. Legally, you cannot uh, take the hourly check, but you can invest. Yeah. So as far as um, investments, I represent about uh, 10, 11 different financial institutions. Has anybody heard of like Fidelity, Invesco, Franklin Templeton, American Funds, Goya? Oh, yeah. So um, you know, when I sit with a client, I analyze their situation, what their goals are, how old they are, and I will recommend something that's suitable for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, the reason why, you know, we tell people don't leave your money in the bank because the bank is using that money to make more money. Yes. So they're using your money. Yeah. Okay. So if you buy a house, like what, uh, how many years mortgage you suggest you should go for it? 15 years, 20 years or 30 years? 15 if you can afford it. Yeah. Definitely. Because you will save, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in interest. Your monthly payment is going to be a little bit higher than yeah. the 30 year, years, but your interest rate is going to be lower. Monthly return, the monthly payment will be like double of that. 
most like it's not double no, like not, not if you're paying if you're paying like thousand dollars you're if you're paying eighteen hundred something around. Yeah. So they say another is if one of them is ready in certain moment of their life to purchase a home or property or commercial property, if they want to ask you uh, how you can help them, how you a can commercial property or residential property, commercial property, one of them or two or I mean both of them, how they can handle this with you? I do residential. Residential you do work. residential I, only for now. Yes, I don't do commercial yet. <laughs> so maybe that'll be coming in the future. So is it more the documentation of paperwork for commercial as compared to residential? Well, you have to be able to prove that okay. you can pay whatever loan you're asking for back. Yes. So right now I do, you know, traditional investing, you know, a retirement plan, etc. But I also have, uh, you know, partnership with uh, a privately owned company that does, you know, like fix and flips. So, um, you know, a traditional financial com financial uh, mortgage company is not going to give you money to do those types of projects. Yeah. You know, so new construction. Yeah. Short so um, we do have, you know, clients that are investors in those types of projects as well. So in commercial, in residential, like if you want to buy a house, so <laughs> what's the minimum paperwork required? Like if you're an F1. Yeah, well, this is like what, what, what I ask for. Um, two years of taxes. Mm -hmm. We need um, two months of bank statements. And you have to have enough money there to cover closing costs. Right. right. Um, for your last four pay stubs. No, but the point is that now, see, we are on F1, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not remember. Familiar with this that is for the so future. The, oh, yeah. Is, I yeah. have a question. Yes. You just uh, just now you spoke about the uh, uh, investment uh, plan. So do you just have do you just deal in mutual funds or are you deal in some other plans too? What do you mean, other plans? Like you spoke about mutual funds right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does everybody know what a mutual fund is? Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. So, do you deal only in mutual funds, or do you have any other investment? Well, we do. Um, like I said, the the, the real estate investing as well. Um, are you talking about building portfolios? Directly, yes, we do yeah. building portfolios as well. Mm -hmm. Manage manage investments, yes. Investing in real estate, like uh, what, like uh, real estate, uh, like on paper, like mutual funds. Can we can we invest in real estate, uh, like mutual funds, like a REIT? You mean? I mean, I would have to see which company offers that product. I don't have anybody that has asked me for that yet. Um, but yes, I'm sure we, we have REITs as well. Because you know we have a variety of an array of companies, and uh, we what's the right? amount that like you know uh, from, <clears throat> from the minimum start? amount the minimum amount amount to start? Uh, yeah, it's a hundred dollars a month. So I have people that open their accounts with a hundred dollars, people that open it with a hundred thousand or more. So um, you can put money into that account monthly. Um, and I'll, I'll give you a little small um, projection, just that I don't have internet here. Yelka, tienes internet? Are you guest? Are you guest? Are you guest? Yeah. 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 And the password is uh, over there, man. Seven was seven seven four three. Uh, yeah. Is the phone number? information <laughs> It depends, it will depend on the fund. Um, is it say no internet? Is it connect with this? Ya se había conectado a la primera, a la que dice BC. Cuando me abrí mi hashtag, intenta la que dice BC. 
Nice name of the company, huh? for America. No, it's connected. It's going internet. There is internet. We are not all people. It's you have connected it already. Okay. So this is one of the funds. So is there anyone who doesn't understand what a, a mutual fund is? You can tell them if you want to say something about that. Okay. No, since everybody understands what a mutual fund is, this is one fund that I really like. Um year to date, it has grown. 30%. Okay. One of the most aggressive funds that I have right now. That's a lot. That's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> so, this is, this is just year to date. So, right here, you can see in the last 10 years, there's um, almost a 16% return annually. There's almost $17 billion in this account. Okay. It was created in 1987. Um, but year to date, so for every every five to six years, you're gonna have a down year, right? That's why we have such a, a big uh, increment for this year because last year was a down year. So what a lot of people who don't understand investments, they want to take their money out. That's not when you want to take your money out. That's when you want to buy more because you're buying at a low rate, right? And so yeah. the market comes back up, that's where you're gonna see your gain. So, that's why they use SIP, Systematic Investment Plan. Pardon? SIP. The S&P. Yeah. So, let's just say that we do a Roth IRA. So, the max amount for this year that the government allows you to put in is about is 6500 right it was raised from last year to this year last year it was 6000 this year is uh 6500 so let's just say that um for the next 20 years we invest the max obviously that can change right So if we invest five hundred and forty dollars a month over a twenty year span, the amount of money that comes out of your pocket, let's say if you just put it in the bank, would be a hundred and thirty thousand dollars. In 20, in 20 years, 20 years, but if you invest it, 
This is what you'll have. <coughs> 575,000. In 20 years. In 20 years. If you want to break it in like five, ten years. So we would <coughs> customize the plan and so I could do projections on you know every person individually. You know, like I said, some people only have a hundred. No, if we if we don't want to like in the starting, we are in we know investing for 20 years. Now in the middle of something, something happens. Mm -hmm. You can you can Five, stop it. Eight, so let's just say that you know on Christmas time you don't have money to invest because you're gonna buy gifts for, yeah. for for Christmas. You just call me and I'll you know skip that month and you don't have to um you know put money in your account that month. So that's the difference between working with me and working with you know someone at a bank who you're never gonna have a relationship with. Yeah. You know, you have a child, you come to me, you open an account, no, you know, you sell a house, you know. So I do everything, you know financial i will be your financial advisor now in like if you go back from the like i'm talking about you invested here and we you move back to the country and abc so mm -hmm. money will be secure yeah and and uh, you know uh, like my parents have their accounts here but they're retired in mexico mm -hmm. so they're only taking out what they need you know it so, will be secure like yeah. a security deposit to wherever you go okay so who who protects your investment who protects your money in the bank the bank the fdic a lot of people think that oh the bank nothing can happen to the bank the bank is a business just like my company just like you know and it can go bankrupt so who protects your money at the bank the fdic for how much they charge something, some, um, no, they charge something point. Something Your else. money is protected up to 250,000. Okay, 250,000 through the FDIC. Who protects your money in the securities industry, in the investment The SIPC for how much? For double. The bank doesn't pay you any interest, and investments do. And yet your money is covered for half a million, whereas at the bank you're only maxed out at two hundred and fifty thousand. Plus you own bankers. And yet the people have their money sitting in the bank because they don't understand. Yeah. You know. So, and for investing in this, I uh, like uh, what documents do do we need a social security number or just the ID? The I ten. I will need a picture of your ID, whatever it is that you present to me, because I need to verify your identity. You know, we all we always need to make sure where the money is coming from. We want to prevent money laundering. My licenses are on the line, so I just need to verify who you are, where the money is coming from. But yes, um, that's that's basically all I need. Just if I win, the, if I win just the ID, just the photo ID, your ID, your ID. Your, your, if you win the lottery, it will be on the white right side. Okay. We don't have to worry. We already paid tax. Tax is not going they will cut the tax and give the money to you. If I win the lottery, you have like a million dollars, million or something, five hundred thousand. No, no, no. We can have two options. No, no. What is the minimum monthly amount? Pardon? What is the minimum monthly amount? A hundred dollars a month. And if uh if someone wants to put in lump sum, then what the minimum? The minimum is two thousand. If you don't want to do monthly, you can open the account with two thousand and just let it sit. And it'll grow. Obviously, it's not going to grow the same. Money multiplies over time. It's not the same for somebody that's going to start investing at 40 than somebody that's going to start at 18. The person who starts at 18. So listen to this. If you max out an IRA from when you're 22 to 29, okay, just seven years, and you stop. You will end up at age 67 with 2.4 million. And you only invest in seven years. But the person that waits to third to start at 30 will have to. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you the table. Because you get more years of Exactly, because money multiplies over time. The compounding interest. Compounding interest, correct. <laughs> I think you need to come work with me. <laughs> so if you guys want to learn more about investment, investing and compound interest and all of that and all of this, you can go into this website and download this digital book. 
it talks about getting protected it talks about you know getting out of debt it, it talks about a, a lot of things i i applied for insurance company and they denied because of my age oh i passed the test and never did you did <laughs> It talks about debt stack. You remember we talked about a little bit about yeah, how you to also, pay off credit cards. But you also stack. don't get uh, like small, small like personal loan and all that if you're not uh, like uh, have a green card or you're not so you don't no. So you're not allowed to get credit cards either. No, no, you can, no, get, you can get, get credit cards. Yeah. If you have ITN, you, you can get. Ma'am, you can get card, anything, you but we need one uh, strong citizen. Who gonna be guarantor of us? Okay. We can get a personal yeah, loan, but we need a guarantor. Of course, I know. Of course, I know. Yes, we can get even. We can buy a property or we can deal, but that will be not in our name. Again, the interest rate is very high. Yeah, that will be like eighteen percent. Yeah, like like yes. hard money loans. You know, like we talked about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So don't ever get yourself into whole life insurance, flexible life, IUL. No, yeah, it's a rip off. I, I was just with a client this morning who they sold her IULs. She's going to cancel the policy after paying seventy two hundred. She's been she's had the policy for four years. She's paid out of pocket like seven thousand two hundred dollars. Right now she wants to cancel. She only has six hundred dollars. You know this talks about all of that. So let me show you really quickly the table that I was talking to you guys about. So. If here, this is the cost of waiting, okay? Not investing, you know, at a young age. So here you have the person on the left side that starts at 22 and they max it out with $6,500 a year, right? Which is the max that the government allows you to put in, in the IRA. If you only invest from the age of 22 to 29, out of your pocket came, came uh, $79,000, right? But look at look at this person who starts at 30, who start contributing at 30. So they're gonna have to put money away. Oh shoot. They're gonna have to start putting money away every single year from the age of 30 to 67. Okay, out of their pocket came out two hundred and forty-seven thousand dollars. And they're still two hundred thousand dollars short than the person who only put money away for seven years. See, yeah. this is two point two, and over there's two point four. That person only invested for seven years, and the other person invested for thirty seven years, and they're still two hundred thousand dollars short. That person only paid fifty two thousand dollars. Correct. That's the power of compound interest. Money multiplies over time. So. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So, we have something a little clear for Betty. We make her a certificate for saying thank you for her help with us. And I also put your name because I can't show you the trap. And yeah, that's it. And we give her a little card for Amazon and everything else in our behalf to say thank you to you. Thank you, thank you, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. For helping us and giving us this new new perspective. It's a different perspective to see how we invest and how she can help in real estate, all of this kind of stuff. But I want this them, I want the students in the yeah. in the background. We can oh, have the yeah, community. It's here. It's here. <laughs> yeah, I want to see yeah. my community here with me. Okay. I don't want, I, yeah, we don't want to block anybody. Just, just come here. Here in the corner. Uh no, not in the corner. No. Here. Here. In the middle, in the middle. Or come here, come here. So we'll get all class. All class, yeah. Come here, come here, please. Yeah, right here? Yes. Show the certificates. Show the certificates, yes. Yeah. Good. Thank, thank you all of you thank for your you. patience too and to be cooperative and helpful. Thank you for the time visit. We're going to stay here for a little bit if you need something, question or something else.
So you have her information also in case you want. I have the card also. Yeah, you have her card. Yeah, that's my my cell phone number. Where is it? Uh, right here. Where is the office from? Right here in the loop. Does he want to speak with you? Okay. So if in case you need to write her an email or whatever, you have her information. Got I'm going to stop the recording. Stop recording. <laughs>